up, everybody? Welcome to Party on Broad. Today, we are breaking down Tyson's prospects for the Philadelphia Flyers, ranked number six through ten. Joining me, he is the Tyson Quibell. What's going on, man? Not much. Excited to get into six through ten because we got some potential NHL players here, which is not the case for a lot of other teams in six through ten. So, got yeah. some good things to talk about. Love it, man. Uh, guys, we did one through five last week. Uh, make sure you go check that out. Some really fun prospects there, like Mitch Kopp and other and other like uh, Gautier. But uh, today we are leading off with Bobby Brink here at number six. Tyson, tell us a little bit about Bobby Brink. Uh, I still love the kid. Um, he's one of those guys we could talk about, like Tyson Forster, where it feels like we've been talking about him for a minute. Um, but he has I, – I don't even know how to explain why I like him so much. Um, I think it has to do with his draft year. He apparently scored a game-winning goal in overtime in the USHL with a broken – I believe it was a broken – leg or broken foot something of that nature and so you like the skill set and then you're like wait you were able to push through that mm -hmm. and he had a really good college uh, career at denver did really well in two seasons there before turning pro and then since turning pro it's been a little bit more of a struggle for him and so he i think a lot of people expected him to be close to a point per game player uh if he was going to make an nhl jump last year in the american league playing for lehigh valley and and he wasn't and so there's some question marks I think that people have about him. The main one is his size. Uh, in fact, uh, Zach Benson, who was the 13th overall pick in this last year's draft to the Buffalo Sabres, um, some people were actually comparing them similarly and actually using that as a reason to say don't pick Benson. So um, there's still some questions surrounding that. I'm still pretty high on the kid. I think that he plays with a sense of pace and intensity uh, and I think that he has a strong skill set. I think that he could compete in camp for a roster spot. I don't think he'll make it, but it also wouldn't surprise me to see him getting some time with the Flyers uh, at points this season, especially in a rebuild. Uh, what are some of his strengths and weaknesses? Yeah, the main strengths for him is going to be his ability to kind of uh, play well in the offensive zone with his pace and tenacity with the puck on his stick. Um, he has obviously a pretty high amount of offensive upside. Um, there's a competitiveness to his game that you can't really teach. Um, that's always fun to watch. Like, I feel like at some point it wouldn't take long for him to be a fan favorite if everything kind of comes together for him um, because you just see his effort kind of push through all the time. When he was at Denver, he showed he had excellent hands, excellent one-on-one -on -one skills, um, could kind of create plays out of nothing. I think that's going to be less of a thing at the pro level. But in general, to me, he always seemed like a solid kind of middle six support player um, that can play 15 to 20 minutes a night. He's not going to be a liability. He can play on the power play. So that's like what I foresee him being. There's been some hiccups along the way. And, you know, we can get into weaknesses there. Most of that is injury related more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, just that's that seems to be an issue for him. But if those things can kind of even out over time, then uh, I think they do still have a very solid prospect on their hands. Love it. All right. Let's roll on to number seven. We are talking about Helge Granz. Tell us a little about this guy. Yeah, he was involved in a trade with the Los Angeles Kings. He's a second round pick from a few years ago from the Kings. Um, he was ranked kind of a, his draft year, a late first round pick, early second round pick. He fell to the second. The Kings took him. Um, with him, would you kind of stand out? What stands out about him? I call it these like flashes of like, whoa, this kid has like a really strong toolkit. So he has size. Um, he can play physically. He has just a rocket of a shot um, that's kind of a huge advantage to his game. He could play on the power play. He can play on the penalty kill. Like, you kind of see these pieces of the puzzle that go, this kid actually has a really strong skill set that actually should translate well to professional ranks. He's been playing in Sweden. Uh, I believe he will likely play in the AHL this year. Um, and that's kind of like his strengths. That's kind of a little bit of background about him, and he – it's kind of a, a prospect. I think he would more project as like, I would call him like a four or five defenseman, maybe more. So like barely, so he could play second pairing minutes. He's likely going to be a third pairing if, if everything comes together for him. All right. What are some of his strengths and weaknesses, man? So his shot always stands out. That was a big one his draft year. It was just like, he's got a rocket 
Um, his overall like size and strength uh, was really stands out. Um, I think the biggest area proven for him can be decision making. So sometimes this happens with defensemen. Uh, a, a compare a comparable, I think, a lot of is Philip Broberg on Edmonton. He played around forty games for the Oilers last year. They have a similar toolkit. Um, Broberg is a bit of is a better skater, uh, but for Broberg, kind of his his issue has been trying to translate to kind of the NHL game is he can struggle in decision making. So there's a lot of times, especially defensively, where he's chasing the puck, um, where at times he's kind of getting caught in transition, where he might get caught flat footed and someone might go by him. Uh, Grimes has similar issues at times. And so um, overall, like when someone has a toolkit like he has, (coughs) excuse me, you kind of look at him and go, okay, like there's some issues here potentially, but long term, uh, if it can come together, and I think it can, he'll be all right. It's it's one of those things where it's like maturity of game is the issue, right? The more time he spends in the pros, the more minutes he gets uh, mm-hmm. top four at the AHL level, the more likelihood that decision-making will improve. So, All right. Uh, that is Helge Granz. Moving on to number eight, it is Carson Bjarnason. Who is this guy, Tyson? He is a goalie. He is the first goalie on the list here. Uh, Some people have called him the heir apparent to Carter Hart, um, which is weird because Hart's not old, but um, that is what they talk about. So he was a second round pick of the Flyers, I believe in this year's draft. And uh, he played for the Brandon Wheat Kings in the WHL. He was the starting goalie for Canada at the under 18s before in the final game, um, poor kid got run over and was injured and was not able to finish the game and his team kind of got caved in so um but in general for him he uh is a big uh athletic goalie he's kind of your stereotypical modern goalie um hard is actually small for a, a modern goalie uh mm. in size for sure um but the Briarnison is a lot bigger he's got strong athleticism he played on a really bad brandon team like a rebuilding team so they he, get, he was seeing a ton of shots um, that's his main kind of toolkit. And, yeah, so I think there's definitely some potential there for him to be an NHL goaltender, potentially a starter. Most public lists in this last year's draft had him either as, like, the top goalie or in the top three. So uh, there didn't seem to be much of a difference, though. Most scouts – there's uh, this one this one kid, uh, Michael Harrible. I believe I'm saying his name right. He's, like, a six foot seven, six foot eight kid that – What? Um, yeah, the big, <laughs> big kid that – some people had ranked really high. He kind of fell off. And so depending on who you talk to, it was oftentimes between Bjarnason and him for okay. top rank. So, so it's a, he's a solid prospect. He's a solid goaltending prospect with a really good toolkit. Uh, strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Just his strengths as, as mentioned before, just his athleticism, his speed yeah. going cross crease. Um, he can be aggressive, uh, which is fun to see at times. Um, his main weakness, and this is the case for goalies, goalies take a long time to develop. So it's consistency. It's it's learning to how to like get out of your own head, in light of consistency. Like it's it's such a difficult position to play because, really, so much rise and falls with you. And so over time, I think that'll be helpful. I think uh, as Brandon improves, like I think he'll be a big reason why they have uh, they'll they'll have a big year this year. Nate Danielson, he was a top ten pick of the Detroit Red Wings, is going to get sent back and uh, will be a huge year for him. So there's some definite pieces there for Brandon to make a step, which means he will likely perhaps be able to work more on technical elements of his game and not just be in constant survival reactionary mode like he was last season. All right. Uh, I believe we're sticking with the goalie theme here. Uh, Heading to number nine, it is Samuel Urson, man. Who's this guy? Yeah, so Flyers fans will probably recognize the name because he played some games last year. Um, when there was injury. And he is uh, from Sweden, a highly uh, athletic goalie. So um, he had a few games with the Flyers and for Lehigh Valley where he looked like uh, the second coming of Ron Hextall uh, (laughs) in terms of athleticism, in terms of competitiveness, in terms of how he was just fighting for pucks in a a positive way. Um, And so, yeah, he's a, a player that I think will actually compete for a backup role for the Flyers this year, potentially, depending on what they decide to do with, uh, as we know, the Flyers are kind of in this interesting place where there's some thought about trading Carter Hart, that's quieted. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll see what happens there. Cal Peterson, who they pulled up from the Kings, had a really good rookie year 
and just fell off the face of the planet last year. So mm-hmm. I think that there's room for uh, Erickson to make the club, and he's a name that I think Flyers fans will hear at some point next season for sure. All right. That is Samuel Urson finishing it off. Number 10, Devin Kaplan. Who's this guy? He is probably someone that Flyers fans aren't as familiar with. So he was a draft pick in uh, last year's draft, and um, he is a big kid. He's 6'2". I believe he comes in around 210-ish, plays uh, NCAA and Division One, and he put up just under, I think it was like 29 points-ish, so about 40 games, which is really good for a freshman. So he is kind of the king of size, physicality, and what I call transition game, meaning He's a very strong transition player. He's really good at moving the puck up ice. He's really good at creating space using his size. Um, Just a solid, solidly built kid who's physically mature, but he also has a hockey sense and ability to be able to make plays well to maintain possession in the neutral zone, in the offensive zone. There's a really, really excellent job of getting the puck up the ice. So he's a a guy that I do think he might, I'm I'm actually anticipating he will sign with the Flyers uh, after this year. Cool. Um, may may see some NHL time later in the year. That wouldn't surprise me, um, especially if they're out of the playoff picture. If not, um, you know, I think he will see some AHL time for sure next year. His main issue, like a lot of a lot of guys of his style of play, is just top speed. Like he is mm-hmm. not. It's not that he's slow. It just means like that's not his game. I think of uh, JD Greenway on Buffalo used to be on Minnesota. You watch him play sometimes. If he's trying to like book it down the ice to you know, kind of be a support in a two-on-one, he's getting left behind. But if he's got the puck on his stick and helping transition, he's smart, he can get where he needs to go. And so there's definitely some comparisons there in game. All right. So that wraps up Tyson's top 10 Flyers prospect ranking. Number one, no surprise, Matt Bay Mitchkoff. Number two, Cutter Gauthier. Three, Tyson Forster. Four, Oliver Bonk. Five, Emil Andre. Six, Bobby Brink. Seven, Helge Granz. Eight, Carson Bjarnason. Nine, Samuel Urson. And 10, Devin Kaplan. My last question to you, Tyson. After Mitch Koff, after Gauthier, who has the highest ceiling following those prospects? I think Forcer. Okay. I think Forcer has the highest ceiling, I think, as a top six forward. Um, if not Forcer, then Bonk would be a close second. All right. Um, some guys, it was, I think last call we saw some people saying he's going to be a star. And I could be wrong, but I just don't see the offense in him in the same way. Like, I see him being a solid NHL player. Forrester, at least, he just has these moments, man, where he'll kind of break through and you'll be like, whoa, that was an unexpected gear. He seems to have that gear in his toolkit. So I think it would be Forrester. All right, man. Awesome, awesome stuff, man. Tell us, where can we find you, dude? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Quibell Tyson, and I'm going to be doing some more writing here. Uh, pretty quickly, uh, especially as the season's sort of getting into gear here. It's a good year to keep track of the 2024 draft. I've been working yeah. on my rankings for that, if you're a Flyers fan. Um, so keep an eye out for some of those things, and we'll continue to go through a prospect series as we go. Uh, Macklin Celebrini. Uh, is, that, is that the guy? Is that like where, – where, where does he rank with some of the guys that were drafted this year? Any quick thoughts? Yeah, this, so la- last year's draft is – oh, this last year's draft was so deep. It was the deepest draft since 2015. Uh, if anyone remembers the 2015 draft, that was McDavid number one, Eichel number two, Dylan Strome, which was a weird one, at number three. Um, but number four was Mitch Marner. And so if you went through – and that's just the top four. If you go through all those guys that are solid NHL players, right? McDavid, superstar. Eichel just won a cup. Marner, one of the best offensive players in the league. Even Strom had a decent season last year. Like, he's a solid kind of second-line NHL player at this point in his career. Um, in comparison, this, this year's draft was very, very similar. Like, uh, some of the analytics guys were saying players that were the guy that went, like, fourth, right, with Will Smith. Um, in most other draft years, he would go one. So the guy that went four went one. So this this last year was such an anomaly. The fact that Mishkov got taken at, you know, where, where the Flyers took him later on as an example, he would be the undisputed number one in this year's draft without question. Wow. So in terms of, of see, uh, ceiling of Celebrini, it's not that he's a bad player, 
Uh, it's not that he's not going to be a potential number one center. I think he will be. He set U.S. Hockey League records last year. Um, he's going to play, I believe, at uh, Boston College this year. He will likely be a point-of-game player. I just don't think he's going to be at the ceiling of some of these guys that went in the top four and even Mishkov uh, this past year. So, again, you're still getting a, a really solid first-line player. Whether you're getting that next tier of star is still a question. We'll see yeah. how he does early on with Boston College. But uh, one player to keep an eye on as well this year for Flyers fans that are watching uh, Mishkov in games that they can in the KHL. Uh, Demidov, who is Ivan Demidov, is actually his line mate and teammate. Ah. And he is ranked in the top five. Some people believe he could challenge for the first overall pick in this year's draft. Again, it's early. Um, time will tell. Russia is not able to play in international events. So he's another potential kind of drop. But he is definitely a player. He will stand out when you watch uh, games it. in the KHL. So, And it might be kind of cool to see that connection sometime in the future. Future line mates, you know, 17, 18-year-olds eventually making their Flyers debut. Maybe convince them to come over. Who knows? Together, All right. yeah. <laughs> all right that is my man tyson thank you everyone for watching please be sure to like comment subscribe all uh all that fun stuff uh again if you missed one through five uh you can check that here down in that description below uh follow my man tyson on twitter at quite tyson i am dives mr crockpot for tyson for myself stay awesome everyone <laughs>